refusing to play even sanitized versions of it. This week, the music industry was encouraged to stop releasing the music, and a U.S. senator threatened to hold public hearings on the subject. Our report tonight from NBC's Larry Carroll. It is the music of America's meanest streets. It is a background score to a life born of sudden violence, poverty, and hopelessness. It depicts life that is all too real in places like SC, South Central, Los Angeles. In a studio built inside a rundown Hollywood tenement, a group called the South Central Cartel is working on a single from what it hopes will be its breakthrough album, In Gats We Trust. Gats, slang for guns. I, I wouldn't even rap about something if I didn't know about it, you know, firsthand. You know, I done went through it, my friend went through it. You know, we sit down and we talk about stuff. You know, we write about what we feel and what we done been through. This is gangster rap. It is raw, in-your-face music that reflects violence, drug use, Pass me the joint so I could take a toe. disrespect for women, and promiscuity in the most graphic of terms. Shoot him out there, like yes, the white crack of my with a whack MC. The flavor of the most is it first appeared on the scene five years ago and found its market in the neighborhoods where it was born. Tapes passed hand to hand, marketing by word of mouth, in clubs. Radio was out of the picture. But as hardcore rap became big business, radio began to cater to an audience growing into the mainstream. Special versions were recorded for broadcast, but retained many of the sexually explicit and violent lyrics. That led to public calls for change. L.A. Tiny's Jams, the Power 106 is too pod. Now, not only radio, but music video programs and even hip-hop fan magazines have begun to regulate the messages of gangster culture. In Los Angeles, where a rating point in radio can be worth a million dollars a year, stations that choose to censor gangster rap take a risk. But at this station, the risk was deemed worthwhile. There comes a point in time when you're influenced on a daily basis by so much negativity that plagues our communities that you have to put the ratings game aside, you have to put the bottom line aside, and you have to do what's right. The For KACE, located near the geographical heart of South L.A. gang activity, it meant dumping a program format dependent on hardcore rap. Other stations, like market leader KPWR, continue to play the music, but now edit or bleep out words deemed too offensive. And I continue to believe that this is superficial in some ways. Why not Ma say, we're not going to play the record? Wouldn't that send a stronger message? That would send a very strong message, but it might also punish the success of the radio station. But community leaders say that success comes at too high a price. So if you're calling yourself bitch or someone is addressing you as that, then you take on that role or that characteristic. And I think it does us as a society great harm. We have to speak out against that, which demeans us. And Unfortunately, gangster rap does that. While some say the commercial life of gangster rap may have nearly run its course, others insist it is here to stay. Yo, I'll shoot your moms if I have to. Perhaps moving back to its underground roots. Hip-hop magazine writer James Bernard says rap censorship is a waste of time. Those records are still going to be popular, those attitudes are still going to be out there, and those guns are still going to be glorified. Regardless, Rich Guzman and a growing chorus of others believe something must be done. If we as a radio station have influenced even one in a negative way, then we certainly are not serving the community in the proper way. Yet even he agrees that such efforts may only be symbolic. Larry Carroll, NBC News.